We finished the electrical event of the heart. Now let's look at the mechanical event. The mechanical event of the heart, the heart like the, the car engine. So this the the operation you have four chambers. And these four chambers they they work like two atrium together, two ventricle together. So you you you, you only have two sequence, atrium, ventricle, atrium, ventricle. And when the heart contract, the heart actually spent most of time in relaxation. It spent two thirds of time in relaxation and only one third of time in contraction. And because the heart needs to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and for forever, you hope it can, it can work forever. So the only break it can take is between contraction and contraction. When you go to sleep, your heart still work. So you need to take a, take a break between contraction and contraction. So the heart spends more time, two-thirds of time in relaxation, and one-third of time in, in contraction. And you say, why is this important? In chapter 15, when we talk about the blood pressure, because the heart spends twice more time in relaxation. When we calculate the mean arterial pressure, when, we, when you, we measure the blood pressure, we have the systolic pressure, diastolic pressure. We don't just average these two together, become the the mean arterial pressure because the heart spend more time in relaxation. We we have to consider that. So we have to use the one third of the systolic pressure plus two thirds of diastolic pressure to calculate the mean arterial pressure. Because that's the mechanical events. So let's look at the mechanical events. Let's look at the atrium first. So you found most of the time this is one cycle. Most of the time the atrium stay in relaxation. And it contract then relax again. So the blood, you find the blood go to the atrium before the atrial contraction happens. Yes. And actually, a lot of blood go back to the atrium before the contraction happens. We call the passive feeling from the atrium to the ventricle. So let's look at the blood flow. In the cardiovascular system, everything is operated by the pressure gradient. And the pressure is low in the atrium. When it's relaxed, its pressure is low, and when the pressure is low, blood flow in. So the blood gonna go from the uh, vena cava, go back to the atrium, from the pulmonary vein, go back to the atrium. And there's a AV valve. These valves are designed easily open in one direction, almost impossible to flip back. And when the pressure is higher, when you have blood here, and the gravity and the pressure gonna push the blood go from the atrium to the ventricle. So this is the passive feeling. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is called the passive feeling. So passive feeling, 80% of blood go from the atrium to the ventricle without atrial contraction. And atrial contraction gonna squeeze the last 20% of the blood from the atrium to the ventricle. Because of the passive feeling, if the patient have atrial fibrillation, Compare with the patient with the ventricle fibrillation, I can ask you, okay, which one is more serious? You know, the ventricle uh, fibrillation is much more serious because now you have no blood out. And plus, if you this patient have atrial fibrillation, because of passive feeling, 80% of the blood can still go from the atrium to the ventricle uh, without atrial contraction. So if the patient have the atrial fibrillation, it's probably going to survive. When does the atrial uh, contraction start to play a big role? When you exercise. When you start to exercise, you need to squeeze more blood out. And when you squeeze more blood out to the ventricle, you're going to squeeze more blood out to the whole body. The atrial contraction starts to play a bigger role uh, when you start to exercise. Okay, so now the atrial contraction happens, squeeze the last 20% blood to the ventricle, and now these two doors shut close. When you open the door, well, you, you have your parents have argument, you go to your room, you open the door, not too much noise, then you slam the door closed. That's when you make a big noise. When the door closed, make a big noise. So they create a big hard sound. S1 happens when these two AV valve shut close. And you say you have two door, two doors. Yes, they work together simultaneously. So you have two AV valves closed, simultaneously you have the first heart sound if you have two well you have a problem because they don't work together so you have first heart sound come from the two AV valve shut close now the two ventricles are full because of the AV node delay when we talk about the electrical events because of AV node delay so the atrium and ventricle they don't work together the, the 
Atrium squeezed the last 20% blocks to the ventricle. Now you have two full chamber. They start to contract. So ventricle contraction start after the S1 and after the atrial contraction. After atrial contraction, atrium, re atrium, uh, atrium relax. So these two ventricles contracting. When the contract is like squeezing the balloon, when you're squeezing the balloon, the, you're going to pop, right? The, the weakest part of the whole bowl is going to pop open. And that's not these two AV valves, it's these two semilunar valves, because the valves are designed to open in one direction and almost impossible to flip back. And you can imagine if this person have the mitral valve damage and the blood gonna flow back, this is when the problem happens. When the ventricles start to contract, some blood's gonna go back, that's not good. So they need to surgery fix the fix the mitral valve. Uh, ideal situation, okay, when these two ventricles start to contract, the pressure quickly build up. It's like you squeeze the balloon. So when you squeeze the balloon, the weakest part of the balloon gonna pop and this this two. So these two semilunar valves pop open. So the blood go to the aorta, to the pulmonary artery, when the ventricles still contract, until it stops. When it stops, these two doors shut close at the same time. Second heart sound. So the second heart sound comes from the two semilunar valves shut close. And when you shut close, okay, the pressure uh, drop, and the pressure drop, Everything operated by the pressure gradient, blood start to go. So the blood feelings, and then this cycle start again. And that's the mechanical events. That's the mechanical events of the heart. Now let's look at the pressure volume curve. Because the pressure, the volume change, we can look at the pressure volume curve. And your heart has four chambers. Ideally, we can look at the pressure volume curve for each one of them. But the pressure in the two atriums are very low, so it's not fun to talk about the pressure volume curve of the atrium. So when we look at the pressure volume curve, you can look at the pressure volume curve of an engine. You can create a pressure volume curve. That's the pressure and volume change of that chamber. In the heart, we usually look at the pressure volume curve of the left or of the right ventricle. So in the test, I can give you the pressure volume curve of the left ventricle, I can give it a pressure volume curve of the right ventricle. And let's look at the pressure volume curve. This is the pressure volume curve of the left ventricle. So we use the left ventricle to explain. It starts from this point. So that's the point when the heart completely relaxed. When the heart completely relaxed, the pressure is pretty low. So this is the left ventricle. The pressure is very low, almost zero, because that's the only break your heart can take. So you won't want to completely relax. The volume is not zero, because you still have a little bit blood stay, about 65 ml of blood stay in the ventricle. But that's okay, this blood will be sent out next contraction, so it won't stay there forever. So the, pr the pressure is low, the volume is low, about 65 mil, and I told you everything in the cardiovascular system operated by the pressure, gr uh, pressure gradient. So when the pressure is, is low, blood's gonna go from the atrium to the ventricle, passive feeling. So when the blood go to the ventricle, the volume start to increase. The heart still relaxed. The heart still relaxed. So nothing happened in the pressure yet. Until, at this point, atrial contraction. Atrial contract the A prime. That's when the atrial contraction happened to squeeze the last twenty percent of the blood from the atrium to the ventricle. So the last twenty percent blood squeeze in. The pressure increased a little bit, and the AV valve shut close around here. So now you have a closed chamber. It's like a balloon, and we call this volume end diastolic volume. So now it's here. You have a completed balloon. Think about the balloon, and you start to squeeze. You squeeze the balloon, the pressure quickly increase. And the balloon not popping yet. The, the pressure increase. The volume no change. So it starts to go from B to C. So ventricle contraction start from B. When you go to C, what happens? The weakest point of the balloon pop open. And that's the semi-lunar valve. So when pop open, the blood go from the left ventricle to aorta, so the blood volume decrease, volume decrease this direction. 
but the heart still contracting so the pressure keep increasing out pressure increase volume decrease so together it go in this direction until it go to here and that's when the events stop stop contraction and the semi lunar valve close it reach here so from here to here you found this volume change that's how much blood being sent out from left ventricle to aorta so from about 135 mil to 65 mil that's when you are resting and this volume that's how much blood being sent out per contraction is called the stroke volume it's about uh, 70 mil and this volume definitely is going to increase when you start the exercise so when you start to increase exercise you found okay this this going to this going to shift to the right stroke volume will decrease and also more blood will be sent out but in the resting you can go do this d so that's when the semi lunar valve close and that's the end systolic volume so now the heart is going to relax because they're going to take a short break when you relax the pressure quickly drop so now you drop to the a when the pressure drop, everything operated by the pressure gradient. Now the blood passive feeling start. The blood gonna go from the atrium to the ventricle. Volume increase. This cycle keep going. So this is the pressure volume curve. Represent this cycle keep going this way. And I can ask you a lot of things on the pressure volume curve. I can ask you, okay, uh, what's the end diastolic volume? And it's here. What's the end systolic volume? This here. What's the stroke volume? Okay, this two are stroke volume. Uh, I can ask you when the AV valve open. AV valve open when the blood go from the atrium to the ventricle. This here. And when the AV valve close, it's not A prime. It's here. Right? And when it when the semilunar valve open, semilunar valve open the wrong here. This when the volume starts to decrease. And when the semilunar valve close, that's here. And from where to where the heart contracting, the heart is contracting, the ventricle contracting from B to not stop yet to D. So from B to D, this heart contracting. And when the heart is relaxing from D to B. So you can actually draw a dash line. This is the contracting part, this relaxation part. And I can ask you, okay, when you exercise, what happened to the stroke volume? Stroke volume gonna increase, you're gonna send more blood out. So you can imagine this B prime C gonna gonna shift to the right because you want to have a bigger stroke volume. Actually D and A gonna shift to the left because you're gonna send more blood out. So a lot of questions I can ask you the pressure volume curve. I can ask you the left ventricle, I can ask you the right ventricle. The right ventricle, uh, the, the, the volume is actually the same because every time you send the same amount of blood out uh, from the left side and the right side because the flow need to be the same. Imagine if the blood flow out from the right side is not the same as the left side. You cannot have blood accumulate somewhere because it's closed circle. It actually happens in the patients with uh, survive the heart attack. Now the one pump won't be able to catch up with the, the, the second pump. Uh, what happens is blood accumulate. Usually accumulate in the lung, so you can cause the lung edema. So the stroke volume, left side, right side, need to be the same. But the pressure, if I ask you the right pump, the pressure is lower because the right pump just need to send the blood to the lung and come back. It doesn't need to be the same pressure. The pressure is, would be lower. But the shape and the volume remain the same for the right side and the left side. So I told you pretty much everything I can ask you in the pressure volume curve. This is pretty important in the cardiovascular system. I have so many questions I can ask you. Okay, we spent 15 minutes only talk about two slides. Means these are very important slides. Mechanical events of the heart. Let's take a break.